What happened was I found every way to fail for six months in the business. I tried to quit twice. I got talked out of it by two people who thought I could have some potential in the business. And I really was on the verge of quitting. Let me tell you about some of my, my first lessons because I think I, I was really blessed. I had some good early first steps that were important that, that helped me on the right course of this recruiting thing. If you want your clients to work with you, then what you have to do is get to know your client at a level, especially at the highest levels, am I right, where you have a relationship. I began to provide a little bit of intimacy for my clients. They began to provide it back to me. And you've got to find creative ways to let your, let your clients come into your life. Find something that's going good in your life that you can talk to your clients about so that what? They'll talk to you. Networking tips, you want to always provide a bridge. What's that? That's when you give two people something to talk about. Don't just stand there and introduce two people and then wonder why they both got their finger up their nose. Give them something to talk about. Give them a bridge, right? Give them bridge them in. What you both have in common is you both like to cook or gamble or golf or whatever. Gerald Roach, they were talking to him. They said, why are you successful, Gerald? You're the man in the recruiting business. He said, I'm not really sure. He said, but one thing I know that works well for me is I don't separate my business life from my personal life. My friends are my clients, and my clients are my friends. And in an instant, I changed my philosophy. Because up to that point in my life, I had always believed that business and pleasure didn't mix. Now, what I'd ask you to do is set your floor. I don't care what number you pick. Go with a conservative number if you have to. You don't have to make a big leap of faith. For me, that was a leap of faith, and maybe for some of you, you'll make a leap. So I set a floor. $10,000 was going to be my minimum fee. And then I began to ratchet up my minimum fee every, every year. And every time business was good, I ratcheted up, ratcheted up, ratcheted up, ratcheted up. Till my minimum fee was $30,000 and then $45,000. Here's the next thing that happened for me was I discovered, actually I created this script, this guaranteed recruit script. So this is the guaranteed recruit script where the old way of recruiting for me was calling and telling people about a great job. I've got this great job. And they would tell them about it, and they would either volunteer themselves in, or I might send you my resume or whatever. The new way is my guaranteed recruit script, where I go to them and I say, you know, most people fit in one of three categories. You're either looking for a new job, locked in where you're at, golden handcuffed, or perhaps open to something better. If it meant a career advancing opportunity, which situation are you in? See, your value as a recruiter is much reconciled in your ability to find excellence in the marketplace and entice it to interview somewhere else, regardless of whether it's looking for a new job. What you want to do is you want to get some coaching and some mentors, somebody's bigger than you, offer to buy them lunch, ask for ideas, return with the ideas completed. You'd be surprised. These really successful people, when they give you a list of six things to do and you come back and you say, these are the five, these are the five things you told me to do and I've enrolled in the class that starts next week. Give me some more. They get really excited about helping you. But most people take the advice, they go away, they never come back. Let me tell you about my first networking event. Because today, I make 75% of my business through networking. Whoa, that's a big number. How do you do that? So 12 CFOs showed up to play golf with me for the first Bay CFO event. Okay, and that's the group that I, that I founded. Then I decided I was going to have you know, dinner meetings and speakers and that kind of thing. And I reached out to Gavin Newsom. Love him or hate him, he was in the paper every day. I knew if I could get him, I could get a lot of CFOs to show up. So I sent him, hey, I want you to come and speak for the Bay CFO organization. And I emailed him once and twice and three times and four times, five times, phone calls, nothing. Finally, I got an email back. He said, Joe, I've not heard of the Bay CFO organization. Enlighten me. And I figured my goose was cooked, but I'd come this far. So I emailed him back. I said, Gavin, somewhat surprised that you've not heard of the Bay CFO. Because <laughs> somewhat's a word, right, Big Bird? It's been around for quite some time. <laughs> That's what you do if you're new in the business. You've been in the business for quite some time. I used it for many years. It's been around for quite some time. And a number of the Bay Area's leading CFOs are members, because, you know, one or two is a number. <laughs> and I held my breath, and, and I said, oh, and I said, I made this appeal. Ask for what you want. I said, I'd like you to come and speak. I know you're going to be running for mayor. If you'll come and do this, I'll personally call every CFO in the Bay Area and invite them to come hear you speak. And I got an email back. He said, okay, I'll do it. And um, so then... 
you know, first first meeting of the Bay CFO, here here I am, 65 guys show up. I mean, anybody's anybody, right? 65 guys show up, and I, I come to the front of the room in my good suit, you know, looking all corporate, right, talking proper. And I said, welcome to this evening's meeting of the Bay CFO. I'd like to welcome all of you here as we get a chance to hear from my good friend, Mr. Gavin Newsom, right? Everybody applauds like crazy. And he came up and spoke, and now that group is 700 members. And 50% of my, my business comes from this group that I started. 